The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is our gospel reading for this past Sunday, which was the third Sunday after the Epiphany, thinking of the wise men coming to worship the infant Jesus again. But we're looking at Luke chapter 4, verses 14 to 21, especially focusing in on that last verse. But we'll hear the whole section, Luke chapter 4. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom, and he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began by saying to them, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. My dear friends in Christ, as I had mentioned, Luke is recording for us here the second appearance of Jesus during his public ministry in the land of Galilee, that northern portion of the land of Palestine, the land of Israel. The first time he had appeared there, remember, that was at the wedding of Cana when he changed the water into wine. And and after that, he headed back down to Jerusalem for a time, to Judah for a time, and he cast the money changers out of the temple. He gathered a great number of followers, larger than just the 12 disciples, a larger group that followed him. And he preached in many different areas in the southern portion of, of Israel, in Judah. And then after that, he returned to Galilee, where he ended up spending most of his public ministry. He spent most of his life there, his early years, and then a lot of time during his public ministry. And it was God's will that he should preach there, because our reading, it does say, Luke says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. Many people went out to hear Jesus preach and teach and to see the miracles that he performed and his fame spread all over the area. And most people there knew who he was, that he was Jesus, the carpenter's son from Nazareth. That didn't mean that they understood that he was the Savior, though. But then Jesus went to his hometown and Luke says, he went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom, and he stood up to read. Jesus was being honored that day as a visiting teacher would usually be when he, well, somebody that grew up in the town that came back to the town who had a reputation as a, as a great teacher. And he was asked to read the scripture reading, the scripture lesson for that day, and then to explain it, to preach a sermon on that portion of scripture that he read. And Jesus' message for them that day was that he was the promised Messiah, that he, the Savior, had finally come to truly do his work. Under most circumstances, though, when we think about Jesus, he, it probably would be accurate to say that he was kind of flying under the radar, not making a big show of himself, trying to be on the front page of the newspapers if they had them that back in those days. But he was trying to fly under the radar, we could say, as far as that was possible for someone who was preaching with the authority that he did and someone who was performing the miracles that he did. That 
would attract a bit of attention, but Jesus generally wasn't standing up in front of the people and saying, I'm God, I'm the long promised savior, I'm the seed of the woman who was supposed to come and crush the serpents, the devil's head. He didn't say that he came into this world to be the fulfillment of all of the prophecies of the Old Testament. That wasn't his normal message, but here on this day, his message was a bit different. To the people of Nazareth, he very plainly, clearly said, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And see, with those words, he was clearly identifying himself as the promised one. He was saying, I'm God, I'm the seed of the woman that was to crush the serpent's head. I'm the fulfillment of those Old Testament prophecies. He was saying that scripture is fulfilled in Jesus. Now, how did the people of Nazareth react to that? we'd probably say it, that if we had been in Nazareth on that day and here was Jesus saying, I'm the promised one, well, we'd probably say that we'd be overjoyed and just thrilled to know that the Savior had finally come, that the long-awaited Messiah was finally there, that scripture was fulfilled in Jesus. But that was not their reaction they must have highly respected Jesus because they did ask him to read the scripture lesson and to preach a message in their synagogue on that particular day. But they didn't see the carpenter's son as the promised one. And maybe just the fact that Jesus had grown up amongst them, that he was familiar to them as he probably was, Probably all of that just meant that they couldn't see him as the promised one. And actually what happened is that when Jesus said, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing, so many of the people became absolutely furious when they heard his message. They drove Jesus out of the town and they tried to throw him off a cliff, down a cliff. Because of his almighty power, though, Jesus escaped without any problem, without any hurt or harm coming to him. But when we look at their reaction to Jesus, their reaction, the reaction of those Jews is very similar to the reaction that people often have with regard to Jesus today. And so many people will think about Jesus as a very important person, as a great teacher, a much respected teacher, an important man, but they won't really think of Jesus as the Savior, as their only way to eternal life, as their Savior from sin. And usually it's sinful pride that gets in the way of that, right? Sinful pride. Because who of us really likes to admit that we are totally sinful and that we deserve eternal punishment apart from Jesus, our Savior? That we deserve eternal death in hell if not for our Savior? But when we are called to faith, then we come to realize our sinful condition. And that does humble us. It does get us to see how lost we would be without our Savior, but let's not be so humbled by that thought that we're stuck in despair. Of course, without Jesus, that's the only thing that would make sense, despair, total despair. But you and I, we're special in God's sight. We're special in God's sight because, well, God the Holy Spirit has worked on our hearts and made us believing children of God. Through faith in Jesus, well, God has accepted us as his believing children and our Savior makes us valuable to God. That's what the coming of the Messiah really means to us, that scripture is fulfilled in Jesus. There is 
the answer to the problem of our sin. And because of that, we can look forward to eternal life, eternal joy in heaven with Jesus because all scripture is fulfilled in Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, build up and strengthen our faith in Jesus so that, like Jesus, it is said of us that, as is our custom, we regularly and faithfully and often worship our Savior and study His Word and, and enjoy the blessings of His grace and love as we rejoice that all Scripture is fulfilled in Jesus and therefore we can be sure our sins are forgiven and we can be sure of heaven as well. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus, we pray in your name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.